A key moment in the Vietnam War was when the United States decided to get involved in the conflict. From then on, the North Vietnamese had to face one of the most powerful countries in the world, whose military power was significantly greater than their own. Faced with the technological and weapon superiority of the North Americans, the Viet Cong forces had to resort to their inventiveness to combat them. To do this, they developed all kinds of deadly traps with which to destroy their enemies. An American soldier could not be caught off guard, because he knew that death awaited him in every corner of the jungle in the form of mines, stakes, and poison. All this turned the Vietnam War into a real hell for US troops. In the next few minutes we will tell you all about the Viet Cong tactics against the US Army. Are you ready? Let's get started. To face the United States, the Viet Cong designed a guerrilla strategy, which consisted of constantly harassing their rivals, without ever waging an open battle, as this would have meant certain defeat for the communist forces. Instead, what had to be done was to attack with speed, inflicting as many casualties as possible, before immediately retreating and disappearing into the jungle. The Viet Cong described this type of war, between two countries with such a technological and military difference, as follows, a fight between an elephant and a tiger. If the tiger stays still, the elephant will crush it hopelessly, and that is why the tiger must never stop moving. He will jump on the elephant's back tearing off large pieces of meat to hide later in the jungle. Thus, the elephant will bleed to death. In order to defeat the United States, the Viet Cong took advantage of the fact that the war was being fought on their territory and used this to their advantage. They used their knowledge of nature and terrain to devise a series of devastating traps. Its manufacture implied a very low cost, but the effectiveness was immense. The purpose of these devices was not to kill American soldiers, but to injure and maim them, so that the rest of their comrades would have to take care of the wounded. In fact, it is estimated that in the most intense years of the war, 1969 and 1970, 11% of deaths and 17% of serious injuries were caused by North Vietnamese booby traps. One of the most popular Viet Cong traps were those using poisonous snakes. The guerrillas made pits full of snakes, which they later hid under piles of fallen leaves. Unsuspecting Americans who stepped foot on this immediately sank into a hole full of snakes that mercilessly attacked it. A variant of this trap consisted of hiding the snakes inside backpacks, which they left abandoned in the middle of the jungle. When a soldier's curiosity was too great and he opened the bag, the snakes were released. Within minutes of being bitten, the venom began to spread through the blood, and the flesh around the wound became necrotic and swollen, requiring urgent medical attention to prevent death. Punji sticks were another of the favorite traps of the Viet Cong guerrillas. They were made from bamboo canes, which were cut into pieces 30 to 60 centimeters long. Then they were sharpened and hardened with fire, until giving them a pointed shape, and they were placed at the bottom of a deep hole, which was camouflaged with leaves and tree branches. When a soldier fell into the pit, the stakes were driven into his lower extremities, through his legs and feet. Frequently, the punji used to be covered by urine or human excrement, so that the wounds became infected. The use of fecal matter in traps was a common Viet Cong tactic. It was not only used in stakes, but also in mines hidden in the jungle. The guerrillas defecated on the bombs and then covered them with earth. When a bomb trooper came across these traps and tried to defuse them, he would get his hands dirty, and the first thing he would do was go to a nearby pond to wash off. What they did not know is that there were also mines or stakes in the water, so the troops in charge of detecting the bombs were neutralized with this simple deception. The psychological effect of these tactics was devastating for the US Army. Very soon, fear seized the troops, who day after day saw their comrades horribly disfigured by Vietnamese traps. Most demoralizing was the fact that they never came into direct confrontation with the guerrillas, and many veterans remember the war as fighting an invisible enemy. For a soldier, there was no more terrifying experience than having to walk through the jungle in the middle of the night, when visibility was reduced, and the chances of detecting the tricks were practically nil. Without a doubt, 
One of the most impressive tactics of the Viet Cong was the vast network of underground tunnels they built, which functioned as their bases of operations. The guerrillas used them to live, to store weapons and supplies, and as a hideout after carrying out an ambush on the Americans. These tunnels spanned hundreds of kilometers, stretched across several districts, and proved crucial in countering U.S. military might. Inside, the life of the guerrillas was extremely difficult, since the air hardly circulated, the food rotted in a short time and the diseases spread rapidly. However, the Viet Cong held their positions and defended the tunnels fiercely, as they held enormous strategic value. The Americans could not dislodge the guerrillas from the underground networks, and many times they could not even find the tunnels since the accesses were camouflaged. When they did get inside, they had to fight in the dark, in narrow galleries full of mines or punji sticks. Attempts to destroy the passageways with explosives or flamethrowers were not enough, so the US Army implemented a new strategy to deal with them. They created military units specializing in exploring underground networks, gathering intelligence, and annihilating hidden enemies. These squads received the name of Tunnel Rats, because this task was assigned to the soldiers of smaller physical build, who could move more comfortably in the narrow passages. These men were armed with a pistol, a knife, and a flashlight. They needed nerves of steel, since their work required going into absolute darkness, knowing that at any second they could activate a trap or be attacked by surprise. The tunnels were full of recesses dug into the walls, where guerrillas hid who, as soon as they saw an American, rushed to silently strangle him or run him through with a bamboo spear. Many of the tunnel rats suffered from panic attacks, screaming for help, and begging their companions for a rope to escape the underground hell. A good part of these units died in combat, in the middle of the operations. The success of these corps was never too high, as the Viet Cong easily countered them. Destroying the tunnels required intensive bombardment with delayed action explosives, which plunged several meters underground before exploding. This way, the underground networks were destroyed around 1969. As we can see, the Vietnam War was fought strategically and taking advantage of every little advantage offered by the terrain. These tactics proved effective, as American troop morale fell and eventually the communist forces were victorious. We have reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, what do you think was the worst Viet Cong trap? Leave your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.